Campaign Chairman Paul Manafort is headed back to court Friday amid allegations that he lied to special counsel Robert Mueller. A judge set a hearing for Manafort this Friday. Mueller's team accuses him of lying to investigators, which would be in violation of his plea agreement with special counsel in the Russia probe. Manafort denies it. Well, this comes as the president continued his attempt to undermine the investigation this morning on Twitter, claiming without any evidence that Mueller is telling witnesses to lie. At the same time, the president's lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, tells the Associated Press Manafort's lawyers have been briefing Mr. Trump's legal team on what Manafort told investigators. He says the information does pertain to the president's defense. Joining me now to break it all down, The Hill editor-in-chief Bob Cusack and CBS News Washington correspondent Paula Reed, who joins us from the White House. So, Paula, I want to start with the Russia probe. What's Robert Mueller's team looking at when it comes to these possible connections between Trump allies and WikiLeaks? Special counsel wants to know if any of the president's associates had advanced knowledge about the emails that WikiLeaks released, those hacked emails that were released during the 2016 campaign. Specifically, he's looking at emails between Trump campaign advisor Roger Stone and his associate Jerome Corsi that appear to be trying to arrange a meeting with WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange in an effort to obtain emails connected to Secretary Clinton. Now, they're also looking at whether or not Corsi or Stone had any advanced knowledge of WikiLeaks email uh, release shortly after the Access Hollywood tape, if they were trying to in any way help the president or his campaign by coordinating that release. Now, both Corsi and Stone have adamantly denied that they knew anything about these emails. Bobby, at the same time, we know Manafort's team has reportedly been sharing information with the president's legal team. At the same time, they're talking about a plea deal. Is this problematic for the president? Uh, it's it's somewhat problematic, but it's not illegal. And certainly, I think that the the recent news about Manafort and his lying is certainly a blow to to Mueller's investigation. We don't know exactly what the lies are. Apparently, we're going to find that out later from from the Mueller team. But but overall, this is a, a pretty big development that. Manafort's lawyers were, were in contact with the president's lawyers and giving him kind of a behind the scenes of what, of what they know. Now, of course, Mueller's people probably, you know, they know the most, and, and they, uh, I'm sure, have a couple of things up their sleeve that the Manafort lawyers do not know. But, but this, is a, this is a big development, especially in the final stages of this investigation. Paula, can you give us a sense about the timeline for this investigation? Where is it expected to go from here? Well, we know that the special counsel continues to call witnesses before the grand jury, and that signals that they do intend to still bring charges against one or more people. For example, Jerome Corsi, who I mentioned earlier, he is currently in the process of negotiating a possible plea deal with special counsel. If they cannot come to a deal, he would likely uh, be charged in that case. But going forward, we know the special counsel has a, has a difficult problem on his hand. The fact is that a lot of the witnesses who he needs to cooperate, like Paul Manafort, they have an out here. They have the possibility of a presidential pardon, almost an incentive not to cooperate. And for anyone who's surprised that Manafort wasn't honest in the context of his plea deal with special counsel, we have to remember this is a man who has been uh, convicted on multiple charges of lying. He's been accused of lying about an op-ed in this investigation, lying about tampering with witnesses. And it was his long game strategy to just play out through two trials and hope for a pardon. Here he got into a situation where he could not afford to pay his lawyers for a trial. Trial, so he stayed together with his lawyers who are representing him through this plea deal. But it's unlikely that he actually wanted to cooperate or wanted to provide them with accurate information. He continues a long game strategy banking on the expectation of a presidential pardon. It's pretty much the only thing that will keep him out of jail for the rest of his life. But a presidential pardon will not protect him from any state level charges. Mm. You know, Bob, over on Capitol Hill today, the effort to try and protect this Mueller investigation was actually blocked in the Senate. What happened there? And is it over? For, for any sort of protection for Mueller's investigation at this point? Uh, Democrats have been pushing for this type of protection and possibly in, in the uh, budget deal that would keep the government running. But uh, Mitch McConnell has said this is a solution seeking out a problem, that it's not necessary. McConnell says and has repeatedly said that he thinks that Mueller should be able to complete his work. But at the same time, a lot of Republicans, both at the White House and more on Capitol Hill, are saying it's time to wrap it up, especially now that the election is over. Um, but the you know, with Jeff Sessions gone now, Matt Whitaker being the attorney, 
attorney assistant general, that there is some concern, certainly from, from Democrats and some Republicans uh, who are critical of Trump, that uh, this investigation could be compromised. We haven't seen that yet, um, but I don't think any legislation anytime soon is going to be passing that would protect the Mueller probe. I want to ask you about the interviews the president recently gave, including at the Washington Post, in which he addressed Russian aggression against Ukraine, saying that he didn't like it. Uh, we know that the Poroshenko, the Ukrainian president, has come forward saying that he worries about a war with, with Russia. We also know the president threatened to cancel his meeting with the Russian president, with Vladimir Putin, next week. Can you tell us a little bit more about that meeting with Putin? That's right. The president was expected to meet with Russian President Vladimir Putin at a global summit uh, later this week. But here he has threatened, made a soft threat, uh, to possibly cancel that after Russia captured three Ukrainian naval ships and their crews in the Black Sea on Sunday. This is an act uh, that many in the West have called aggressive and have condemned. The president said when he spoke with The Washington Post yesterday that he was waiting for a report he would have gotten last night before making his final decision. And, you know, Bob, also in that interview, it's interesting, something you don't really hear previous presidents do. President Trump actually slammed the Federal Reserve chair about his policies, and he said, I'm quoting here, they're making a mistake because I have a gut, and my gut tells me more sometimes than anybody else's brain can ever tell me. I mean, <laughs> is that the deciding factor for policy at the White House? It, it's unusual, no doubt about it. Uh, you know, previous presidents, certainly in the modern era, have not gone, gone after the Fed chairman. And I think there's going to be a script for this White House because there have been, there's been some speculation that the economy and the markets have been uh, a little soft recently, so that the economy could be taking a turn toward the downside. And certainly, I think this is, you know, Trump. Trump always mentions the economy, and it's something going in in his uh, 2020 reelection bid that he wants to have the economy very strong. So he's very, he's closely monitoring what the Fed is doing on interest rates, especially uh, also on gas prices. So uh, I, I do think that Trump is going to keep this pressure on. Uh, and you're going to see, I think, some bipartisan support uh, for the Fed chairman just, be, just because it should be independent, technically, uh, with the Fed chairman, even though it was a Trump nominee, uh, and the White House. Yeah, there absolutely should be a wall there. Paula, the president has also addressed climate change and this climate change report that came out. And he says he doesn't believe the science. And, and this is what he had to say about that. One of the problems that a lot of people like myself have, we have a very high levels of intelligence, but we're not necessarily such believers. You look at our air and our water, and it's right now at a record clean. How does the White House address the president's continued dismissal of these experts on climate change? Well, let's talk about what this report is. This came out the day after Thanksgiving, a day where it wouldn't get a lot of attention, and it laid out a scientific case for global warming, not just the impacts on the planet, but also the potential impact on the economy. And the president was asked earlier this week whether or not he was concerned about that. Perhaps that was the kind of argument that could could bring him over to the side of, of climate change believers. And he said no, he did not believe the dire economic uh, forecast that was laid out in that report. And in case anyone was confused, in the Washington Post report, he also laid out that he also did not believe the science that was in that report. Now, the fact is the Trump administration has rolled back multiple regulations that would help improve the cleanliness of our air and our water. And what's so interesting about this report is that this will now be introduced into court. Every time they try to pass another regulation, the Trump administration, that could adversely impact our air, our water, our turtles, whatever. People are going to try to introduce this in court, and you're going to have the administration having to answer questions from judges who are going to say, wait, your government is saying that this, this is going to be the impact. They are saying that climate change is real, so why would you pass this regulation? It will be very interesting to see how that document is used in legal challenges against the administration's environmental policies going forward. Uh, you know, lastly, Bob, I want to ask you, the president said he told Politico that he would be actually willing to shut down the government over border funding. And this is what he said directly. I don't do anything just for political gain, but I will tell you, politically speaking, this is a total winner. Who, who does this hurt more, Republicans or Democrats, Bob? You know, I, I think in the short term, it doesn't hurt anybody. I mean, government shutdowns are bad for both parties, but because the election now is in a rearview mirror, um, senators and, and, and members of Congress aren't overly concerned about it as they would be if it were right before the election. There is no doubt about it, though, that Trump wants his $5 billion as just a short term payment uh, now. Now, Democrats have said for border security, they're ready for $1.6 billion. So do I think there, there could be a uh, partial government shutdown? Absolutely. Um, but I also think that. I probably wouldn't go on for too long just because uh, both sides are staking out $5 billion, $1.6 billion. Maybe you meet somewhere in the middle eventually. But right now, the parties are just jockeying before the December 7th deadline.
Paul Reed, Bob Cusack, thank you both very much for joining us. Thanks, Rena. You bet.